Hello there. Uh, we are to chapter seven, module seven, and this is all about confidence intervals. And there are three types of confidence intervals. We're gonna do this particular video uh, talks about a population proportion, that is our P as we're looking at it. And um, let's start out with some vocabulary. Uh, a point estimate. is a single value used to approximate a population parameter. Uh, population parameter, again, for our purposes, is going to be the mean, proportion, and uh, the standard deviation. Uh, so this is part one, part two, or part one, part two, and part three is actually how that's going to work. Our sample proportion is going to be what's called p hat, is the best point estimate for the population proportion. So this is the true population proportion. 70% of people like this type of food. So that, that would be a proportion. And then we, we sample some people, and we find out that the sample is about 68% like that food. So this is the sample proportion we're going to try to use to infer the uh, population proportion. So let's do a quick practice. 85% um, of 1,007 adults show what, uh, know what Twitter is. Uh, I'm sure that that's higher now because of a certain president that we have. And so our parameter, or our population, uh, this is going to be our p here, our, our p hat, pardon me, because it's from a sample. So this is our sample proportion, and so that's the best point estimate that we have. Next part, a confidence interval. is a range of values used to estimate the true value of a population. So you can see here, four is the mean, and we're going to go so far away from that to, to um, have confidence that we are within a certain uh, parameter. Uh, next up, we have uh, the confidence level. Sorry about that. The confidence level. Is the probability that the confidence interval actually does contain the population parameter, assuming that the estimation process is re re repeated a large number of times? And um, you can see in an example the average height. And so there's n, is 40, randomly chosen men. We got a mean height of 175 centimeters. Standard deviation is 20. So 95% confidence interval means that, we're, and this is what we're going to be doing today, is figuring out what is that. Uh, uh, how far away from the mean can we go to be 95% confident that the true mean, uh, that the true proportion is in there, I should say, or mean in this case. But our examples would be proportion. And for this, for this table, these are the most common confidence levels, 90% confidence, 95% confidence, and 99% confidence. And see if you can figure out the, the alpha that we're getting from this. It's the opposite. So it's basically 1 minus 0 0.9 is going to be 0 0.1. 0 0.05, 0 0.05, and 0 0.01. So these are the corresponding alpha values that we're going to get from that. And um, I'll, I'm going to show you all about what that means uh, here in, in just a moment. So next up, we're going to have a definition. And our definition is the critical value. And that's what we're going to work on finding here for the next little bit. Critical value. Meaning it's our boundary, what we're comfortable with, to guarantee a 95% or, or whatever as, as we go through this. Um, so the critical value is the number of the borderline separating the sample statistics that are likely to occur from those that are unlikely. The number, and this is going to be z sub alpha divided by 2, is a critical value uh, that is a z-score with a property that separates an area of alpha over 2 in the right tail of the standard normal distribution. And we're going to try to find these here. So. If this is the confidence level, then what we're looking for is z sub alpha in this case. Remember, if we look up here, alpha is 0.1. So 
So this is going to be z sub 0 0.05. And if you remember, to find that z value, that's the area in the right. And my inverse norm only knows area to the left. Inverse norm only knows area to the left. So this is going to be 1 minus 0 0.05 meaning our critical value in this case is 1.645, we'll say. For 9, 0.95, that means that what's missing, the alpha in this case, as, as we looked at the, the table up above, alpha is 0 0.05, and half of that is 0 0.025. So I'm going to do inverse norm of 1 minus 0 0.025. 1.96, we'll say. And here, alpha is 0 0.01. Half of the alpha is going to be 0 0.005. So inverse norm, 1 minus 0 0.005 is here. Now these are z values, 2.57, we'll say 6. And we'll use these values. Um, consistently and often, actually. All right. Definition. So here we have our con confidence interval, and um, what we're going to be looking for is our margin of error. So when data from a sample, simple random sample, are used to estimate a population proportion p, the margin of error. we use with the letter E, is the maximum likely difference between the observed sample proportion and the true value of the proportion P. So this is the, 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 the plus or minus, the error. And the formula for that is here. And once again, Q hat is defined as 1 minus P hat. And here's what we mean. Here's the true proportion. We are going to take our sample proportion and subtract E. That's going to be our lower boundary for our, our confidence interval. And the sample proportion plus our error, as defined up here. And there's a few requirements. It's got to be simple random sample, fixed number of trials, meaning N. And these conditions must hold. So now we're to the, the Twitter problem again. 1,007 randomly selected U.S. adults showed that 85% of the respondents know what Twitter is. So we're going to find the margin of error, E, that corresponds to a 0.95 confidence interval. Well, first of all, this means alpha is 0 0.05, and so alpha over 2 is 0 0.025. So we know Z sub alpha is 0.025. We calculated that out here, 1.96. Or you could redo it with your calculator, that's fine. We also know that p hat, in this case, is 0.85. And q hat is 0.15. That's 1 minus that. You can put that in your calculator if you need to. This means that our error it's about 1.96 times the square root of 0.85 times 0.115 over n, which was 1007. And as I put all of that in to my calculator, So 1.96 times square root of 0.85 times 0.15 divided by 1007. That is going to give me my approximate error. So 
So we're going to find a confidence interval that matches this. Well, p hat, once again, is here. 0.85 minus 0.022. 0.85 plus 0 0.022. Minus 0 0.022. There's my lower boundary. Point 0.85 plus 0 0.022. There's my upper boundary. Meaning I'm 95% confident, 95% confident that the true proportion of men, of, of people, pardon me, that know what Twitter is, is going to be between 82.8% and 87.2%. That's the conclusion that we would come to. So based on the results, can we safely conclude that more than 75% of adults know what Twitter is? If the true proportion is between these two here, then the answer is definitely yes. That's way higher than 75%. So here we're going to determine a sample size. And So determining a sample size of a, uh, for a population, meaning if we want to know what does n need to be so that we can guarantee a certain percent uh, within that. So we're going to estimate, uh, when, when the estimate p hat is known, we're going to use this formula. n equals z sub alpha over 2 squared times p hat times q hat divided by our error. When p hat is, when no estimate is, is known, so in other words, we don't know p hat, then n is going to equal z sub alpha over 2 squared times 0 0.25. And there's a reason for that. Uh, the, the largest that will be is going to be 0.5 times 0 0.5 to get the, the 0.25 over the error. And the round off rule is we always round up. Uh, that, that, that's because we want to guarantee that we are going to at least have that 95 or 90% or uh, uh, confidence to, to do that. So let's try our example here. All right. How many adults must be surveyed in order to be 95% confident that the sample percentage is an error by no more than 0 0.03? So here, E is 0 0.03. That's E. Alpha is 0 0.05, which means alpha over 2 is 0 0.025. Z sub 0 0.25, once again, is 1.96. We can look back on that table on the other side. We used it up, up here a little earlier. So a recent poll says that 66 of adults like to buy clothing online. So my p hat is 0.66, q hat is 1 minus 0.66, which is 0.34. So how many adults is the underlying question, how many adults? n is going to equal, we're going to use this one up here, because p hat is known. They gave that to us. So 1.96 squared times 0.66 times 0.34 divided by, I just want to, I made a mistake on these formulas. This should be E squared. I mean, something wasn't quite right there. 0 0.03 squared. 1.96 squared times 0.66 times 0.34 divided by 0.03 squared. 
So this is 957.8, and again we always round up 958 people. This is with a p hat known. Again, double check all that with your calculator. Now let's say we have no prior information. Well, now we're here. No estimate is known. So we're going to redo this. n equals 1.96 squared times 0.25 this time over 0 0.03 squared. 1.96 squared times 0.25 divided by 0 0.03 squared. So it's going to be higher because we don't have any other data to base it on. And again, we always round up. doesn't matter if it's 0.1 or 0 0.01 or whatever. So this is 1,068 people, which is what that's supposed to say. All right. Of the 71 subjects, so there's n, n is 71. In a study about um, abstaining from smoking for eight weeks in 95% confidence interval, so this means z sub alpha over 2 is going to be the 1.96 again. And our interval, they give us. So 0 0.5981 up to 0 0.8104. And we want the best point estimate of p hat and e. Well, this is p hat minus e, and this is p hat plus e. So we're actually going to end up with a system of equations here. And if you remember your, your algebra, I can eliminate the e, so I get 2 times p hat equals, let me add these up, 0 0.5981 plus 0 0.8104, 0 1.4085, and divide that by 2. Which means E, so here, 0 0.70425 plus E equals 0 0.8104. Subtracting that to the other side, 0 0.8109 minus 0 0.704. E is going to be 0 0.10665. Ooh, that's really crowded there. I'm sorry about that. So there is our first 